Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is take three, <laughs> four. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the portion. Uh, my 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 uh, partner in crime, Charlie Brown, is not able to make it with us today. Let's just be praying for her. Um, she's a little bit under the weather. And um, so would you just be praying for her today? And, and we're going to get to, we get to do this. Um, together. So I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to take care of a little bit of business here. Caitlin, will you let people in? Can you do that, sis? I know that you you have your hands full, you're baking, you're cooking, you have a baby, you're nursing. So I'm sure there's enough time for you to also let people in because you're young. That's fine. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Just put me as co-host and I'll, and I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Let me do that. Uh, anybody else want to help co-host Linda you want to help people come in too that'd be awesome we can do that um we're going to admit everybody admit all hi Crystal I would love it Crystal will you just jump in here let me make you co-host and you can just start helping out here sis where are you because Linda and I need to have younger people uh do this I'm going to make you a co-host, Crystal. All right, sis. Thank you so much. Linda, are you still a co-host? I don't think so. Um, let me see. Let me find Linda. Hey, guys. Thanks. Thanks for loving me. Can I just tell you how much I appreciate that? All right. I have co-hosts set up now. We're all good. All right. It would have been really lovely to have had music and all of that, but you know, you get me. <laughs> so this is what we get to do today, right? Okay, so listen, today, let's just get this started. Today we are in Leviticus. Uh, we are in Leviticus. It is Shemini is the name of our portion. And it is a phenomenal portion. Let me see if I can find it on here. Where it is. There it is. Leviticus 9, 1 through uh, Leviticus 9 through 1147. That is our Torah portion in um, Leviticus. And then we're also doing Ezekiel 36, verses 16 through 38. <laughs> I love you guys. You're being so supportive. Thank you. And then our uh, Brett Hadashah, our New Testament reading today is Matthew 3, 11 through 17. So first of all, let's just start off and let me welcome you all here. And let me just pray a blessing over you. Father God, we come to you right now. We're so grateful that we have an opportunity to just walk into into your presence here. We're able to be here with you and with one another. And we thank you for this opportunity and we do not take it lightly. We're so delighted that you have brought us to this place. So today, Abba, would you speak life to each and every one of us? Would you speak your presence onto us? Will you ignite our hearts with your fire? Will you speak life to these dry bones that we have? Father, will you meet and exceed every need of every woman who is represented here today? Those listening in the future, those that are listening by podcast, those that are on live, those that are here with me in the Zoom meeting, Father, will you speak life and ignite their bones? Abba, will you have your way? Will you be glorified today? All of this is just for you. So we set aside our agenda. We set aside everything that we may um, anticipate. And we just bow before you, Father. You are enough. You are glorious and majestic. And you are enough. So thank you, Father, for these women. Will you bless them mightily? Will you increase them? Will you set them free? For those today, Father God, who don't know you, who really don't have a personal walk with you, today, Father God, is their day 
of salvation. Today is their day to turn their eyes to you and to be embraced by you fully and completely. And Father, they don't have to do anything but say yes. That's all they have to do. And you are embracing them. And so I thank you, Father, for wrapping your cloak of righteousness around each and every one of us that are here today, gathered together. Today is the day of salvation. And we bless your mighty name. Have your way. We give it all to you. Amen. Wow, what an exciting, exciting day today. Um, I always love it when there's a whole lot of obstacles. <laughs> Don't you guys really? I mean, come on, let's be honest. When there's a lot of obstacles, it's like, you know, for sure that the Holy One is in the midst of it all, right? Amen, Tish. That's right. So today is going to be a little on the casual side. Uh, I am not going to bring you a huge dissertation. I, what I want to do today, that there's a couple things that the Holy One put onto my heart today that I wanted to talk to you about. And the number one thing was the fire of God. And I don't know why. And I think I, think I have some ideas. <laughs> I have a few ideas about why he wants to talk about the fire of God, because in our Torah portion, hello, <laughs> we get introduced to fire in a whole new way. <laughs> Woo. But also because the fire of the Lord is what he it's, it's the, it's his divinity. And I, I want to start off with uh, sharing with you uh, about the word Shemini. The word Shemini is eight or eighth. There you go, Ruth. Fire. Yeah, fire. Okay, Ina Gould. Somebody needs to let her in. I just let her in. Um, so so the word Shemini is eight. That is our Torah portion, the name of our Torah portion today. And guys, how about this? How about if we just like sit in that for a minute? Do we recognize that Shemini, the word Shemini for this Torah portion is very similar to the word Hashemayim, which is heaven, right? Because it has the esh, the fire, and it has the mem, the water. So Shemini has esh, the fire, uh, the fire of God. And it's made up of three letters, the word Shemini, the root of the word Shemini, not the word Shemini, but the root of the word, the Shoresh of the Mini, which is where you get all the action Okay, the nouns don't have the action. So when you say eight, that doesn't have any action, does it? But when you look at the root of it, that's where you see the feet running the path. Okay, that's when you see the action happening. That's why we always go to the root words. They're going to tell us what is going on. Well, what's going on for the number eight is that this, this sheen, there's three letters, sheen, mem, nun sofit. Now, those of you that follow me in the Rooted Cafe, uh, in the community section, uh, the, the um, membership section, uh, and I have the alphabet course in there, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? I'm going to look over here and see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting thumbs up, you know. So the letter sheen, that's the first letter of the root word for the letter eight. Sheen. Shh. It's the fire. It is the flaming tongues of fire, the manifest presence of Adonai. The letter Sheen is that what is represented by the manifest presence of Adonai, the tongues of fire. Now, if you guys Google what does the letter Sheen mean in Hebrew, you're going to probably, it'll pop up, it'll say uh, teeth. Okay, so it'll say teeth. That's usually what it says. And a lot of people go, well, it's teeth because it's consuming and it's tearing and it's destroying. Okay. It's the fire of God. It is the manifest presence, the fire of God. Now, how do you get teeth and you get the fire of God? Well, first of all, the reason that we say it's the manifest presence of God is because, because the letter Sheen represents his name and he is holy. And he is holy fire. That's who he is. Now, the, the part of the sheen that is the teeth is that thing that separates. So listen with your, listen with your ears, shema with your hearts, guys. It's that thing that separates and divides. It 
it breaks things down to their beneficial nutritional value, right? And then the food, which is the function of the food, because we're talking always about function here, right? The function of the food is to be brought in, to be broken down, to be consumed, and then for it to bring life and nutrition to our bodies, right? Well, that's the sheen. The sheen also represents the word esh, esh, which is fire. So not only is the sheen representing teeth, which is a separation, a breaking down, and a, and a gateway to functioning properly, which is what food does. It, it doesn't do us any good when it's on the vine, right? Food doesn't do any good when it's on the ground. Food doesn't do any good when it's in the refrigerator. It only does good to our bodies when we consume it, when our teeth break it down and it becomes nutrition, right? It's the same with the fire. So this manifest presence of the Holy One, his fire, that's what he wants to talk to us about today. So the word for Shemini, let's stay on course here, the eight, Shemini, Sheen Mem Nun Sofit. Sheen being the manifest presence of the Holy One. The letter Sheen represents the name of the Holy One, Shaddai, his holiness. So whenever you see the letter Sheen, it looks like this, kind of like this. Whenever you see that, think of the, the flames of fire that are coming forth and separating, separating, breaking things down to where they need to be so that they are brought forth in life. Fire will do that. Fire will purify. It will destroy things that are not part of what needs to function in that space. Okay. And it will break it down and it will purify what is in that space. So again, you've heard me a lot lately talk about holy spaces. Right now, ladies, we are in the midst of a holy space. And each one of you, I'm, I'm looking at all my beautiful ladies here that have joined. Each one of you are, are setting a space, a holy space for us to be able to be in and for us to be able to function within. And the Hebrew is always about function. Remember, it's not about the nouns and about the objects. It's about what they do, how they function. So the sheen function as a separation, a tool of separation, flaming fire that ignites, that burns away the things that don't need to be there. And it keeps the things that are supposed to be there in a purified state, right? Okay, so that's the sheen. So we've got the fire. Now what's next to the fire? This is where it gets exciting. Right next to the fire is the mem. Remember, we're talking about the root word for the word eight, shemini, our Torah portion. The mem is is a picture a hieroglyph picture of crashing waves of waves coming up and crashing of a movement of of whatever is before it to be picked up lifted up and moved into and and crash over something else so it's t picking up that fire the flames of fire it's picking up that thing that's purifying that thing that's glorious that's holy that represents the name of god it's picking it up it's lifting it up and it's taking it somewhere where is it taking and what is it washing over the nun sofit is the third letter the nun sofit the nun is a letter that represents if you look it up on google it'll say fish i think what fish. Well, listen, the reason it says fish is because the hieroglyph is talking to us about abundant life. And fish are prolific. They, they, they lay thousands, tens of thousands of eggs. They produce life. That's fish. They also provide life when we eat them. They provide life. So the word is actually, it's, it's fish but it's life. And not only life, it's the product of life, the air, the children, the air, right? But when you put a sofit at the end of a word, there's a five letters that have a sofit form. It means ultimate. So it's talking about the ultimate life. 
the ultimate air. Are you getting it? Are you guys, give me a thumbs up if you're getting it. It's the ultimate air. Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah. So look at the three letters. Boom, boom, boom. Eighth day, eighth day, guys. Boom, boom, boom. The fire, the manifest presence of the Holy One is picking up his on his waves. He's picking that up, washing it over, pouring it over Messiah Yeshua. He is the Nun Sofit. He is the ultimate heir. And that is the essence of the word eight. Where does that take us? Eight takes us out of everything that we have experienced in the first seven and takes us into the holy realm, into another realm, into the heavenlies. It's the first day in the Torah portion right now. It is the very first day, the day eight is the first day that the Kohens begin operating in their jobs, in their function as Kohen, bringing assisting the people approach the Holy One. That's their function. That's their job. That's what they're doing. Day eight is new beginnings. It is starting fresh. Not that everything's been erased. It's everything's been the foundation one through seven creation one through seven. All of that is the foundation. Now it's like, come on. I don't want it to just be that. That's what the Holy One's speaking to us. I want you to come into my manifest presence. I want you to know me. I want you to experience my fire. I want you to experience my washing of the word. I want you to experience Yeshua Messiah. And that's eight. Whew. So here we are, ladies. We are living in the eight right here right now. He wants to speak life to us. I, I hope that all of you ladies have had an opportunity this week to read through your Torah portion. And if you haven't, no stress. Tonight at sundown to tomorrow night at sundown, you've got plenty of time. Do me a favor, listen to it on our portion podcast. We have uh, this week, I believe it's Gail Heaton that's um, reading the Torah portion to us. Listen to it on our podcast. You guys know all the deets, okay? You know all the details. You got the 411. And if you don't, we'll pop it over there. Somebody pop it over there in the live. And that will give the opportunity for you guys to be able to listen to the Torah portion this week while you're going. But listen to me. The Torah portion, let it wash over you. Don't try to figure all of it out. Don't. You can wrestle with it. Please wrestle with it. But let it wash over you and get start off with it having the meaning that the Holy One, his presence, his manifest presence today, today, his manifest presence is right here, right now. And he is washing over you and he is taking you to Messiah Yeshua. That's Shemini. Now we learn in this Torah portion and I want you to read it. Make sure that you read it. Let it wash over you. You're going to learn things about what is holy and what is common or profane. What is clean and what is not clean. Those are the things you're going to learn about in this Torah portion. What it, does he consider food and what does he not consider food? Now, listen, his ways are above our ways. We're not going to understand all of that. I had this conversation last night with uh, somebody, uh, somebody I love dearly, dearly, dearly. They said, I just don't understand that at all. That, that just seemed, it's okay. You know what? It's all right. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are higher than our, our thoughts. We don't need to convince anyone. We don't need to preach at anyone. You know what we need to do is live. We need to live right now. And we need to allow that manifest presence of the Holy One, the Holy Spirit of God, the fiery flame of God to wash over us and to take us into Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That's where we need to be. And to me, that's knowing the whole portion right there. That is what you need to know. You need to know that he is after you, that he loves you, that he is not criticizing you, that he will burn away those things that are not pleasing to him. He will do that because he is God and he loves you and you are his precious ones. There are some of you that are listening today that don't know him. You don't know him. 
you you know about him you you read you've got you're in a group you you've you've been around for a while but you and I both know that you don't know him and today's your day today is the day of salvation today is your day may he wash over you may he wash over you May he wash over you. May his fire ignite your soul. May his, the washing of his word, the word of God, the word of Jesus, may that wash upon you and over you and flow over you and direct you and take you into the heart of Jesus, the Messiah. Shemini, Shemen, the, the root word, that's what this is all about. This is not about us being able to do everything perfect, guys. Yes, it has been a stressful week. I'm getting people are popping on and saying, yes, it's been a stressful week. Sisters, it has been. The world is in an uproar right now. And, and, and it's not going to get a whole lot better quickly, okay? But you know what is going to get better? You having a relationship with your king, your father God through Yeshua, Jesus, your Messiah. So I want you to, to, to see this. I wish I had it written out for you. I'm so sorry that I don't have it written out for you. Sheen, Mem, Nun Sofit. That's the message to you today. The manifest presence is going to wash oh, fire, flames of fire, tongues of fire, going to come down into your soul, into your heart and ignite you. Your dry bones are being called forth to life right now. The nutrition that he will bring to you, the word of God that will be, breathe life into your bones is being breathed into you right now. And who is doing that? Who is covering us? Who is our clothing? Who is our righteousness? Jesus, Yeshua, our Messiah. And that's the message. That is the message that we have to know. That is the message that we have to preach. That is the message that is going to wash over us and take us from being in a place of stress and confusion and not knowing what to do. People are losing their jobs. Pe people are having to change jobs. People are losing their insurance. People are trying to get insurance. Children are sick. Children are in the hospital. Adoptions are not going through. Adoptions are going through. Fostering is coming. Fostering is going. All of these, um, these hard things, none of them are light. All of these are hard. Sis, every one of you, I know it's hard. It's stressful. It's tough right now. I'm telling you, I'm here today in the midst of all of that too, saying, he wants to set you free. He wants to wash over you with his word. He wants the fire of God to ignite in your soul. He wants to bring the revelation of Messiah to you today. Sisters, I just pray and embrace you. I embrace you with that. And may that be what occurs for you today. May this be the day of your salvation. And I don't just mean that I'm talking the day of salvation for every single one of us. Today is our day of salvation, every single one of us. May we be born again, again, right here and right now. May we experience that manifest presence of his, of his flaming fire, the essence of who he is, igniting us and inflaming us. May our souls be on fire. May our hearts be on fire. May our thoughts be on fire. It's the only way we're going to get through these days, ladies. No fear. Are you kidding me? With the Holy One being who he is? We don't have the only, the only space we have for fear is fear of him, which means that we are on our knees before him because we saw what happened with, with Nadab and, and uh, Avihu this week. We, we understand that he is a holy God. And it's not like he's just your pal and hanging out with them. He is a holy God and he is requiring holiness and he is teaching us to include spaces in our life that are holy. And what that means is that we make choices between what is going to be able to honor him in this space. And it, it might not be the same tomorrow or in a little bit. Okay. What is honoring him in this space right now? 
and what is not. And that's what you need to wrestle with because he's going to be sharing that with you individually as he ignites you on fire. <laughs> Linda, are you ignited on fire or are you baking your bread right now? I just need to know. <laughs> she must be, she said, I'm here. Oh, oh, I'm you're here. there. Are yes. you there? I, I was going to say you were going to be rolling your, you, you were going to be rolling your uh, dough out and making yes. your, your braids. But yes. I just wanted to know, sister, are you, uh, are you in any way um, witnessing what I'm throwing out there as far as the fire of God right now? And how totally. he is pulling us into this relationship with him. We are living Torah. And every week when the portion rolls out, I always find that this is how the father orders my steps. So whatever he's stirring up into that, into that portion for the week, that is what ends up emerging. And then by Friday, it's just like reaches a, a peak and it becomes real evident that that this is what he's been trying to do and living in the eights living in living, the eights. It, living in the newness and it, it for me it means um means that you know yes all of our works will be um oh i guess i saw my video on. yeah turn your video on there's there. your beautiful face <laughs> Are you, Hi, sis. oh no my beautiful but there <laughs> um, but yeah i i think that there's things that we can leave behind that happen the other seven days yeah there's always right. something that's not done uh -huh. There's always something that we're waiting on or that we're expecting. And we can start minimizing the effects of what that's going to do to us when we just release that back to the Father. And we say, you know, it, Shaul said, Rabbi Shaul said that every man's work will be tried by fire. And the stuff that's just the wood hand stubble, well, it needs to go. It needs to burn away. So sometimes a stressful week just means that, you know, he's been... Uh, He's been trimming our yard. <laughs> He's been cutting away that excess flesh or these things that need to that just really need to go. Dead works, you know, just dead work. And then that when that fire is done, that cleansing, we have a passion for him again. I mean, we want to dance with him in the kitchen. We are in love with him again. We're free from these encumbrances that would restrain us or minimize what what he's trying to do in our life. So the fire is not something I think that we fear. We're not like Nadab and Abihu. We're not going to be consumed by that. Mm -hmm. Although the father is a consuming fire. Yeah. But he's very choosy about what he will consume in our life. And very, he'll take those things and hone in on them and say, you know, with me, Linda, that has to go. That has no place. Um, as an example, a couple of years now, he won't let me say things are bad or good bad or good. He kept saying, that has to go out of your vocabulary. Why must you judge every situation that comes along, including the weather, <laughs> which you have no control over, as evaluate as bad or good, bad or good. So that's eating in that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, we've sat too long parked in front of that tree with that juice running down our arm, chomping away on what's good, what's bad, what's good, what's bad. So he told me to leave that tree, go to the other tree, the tree of life, which you were so elegantly talking about with the Shemini. And there we eat the fruit of the kingdom. There we eat words of life. There we drink in our identity in Christ. There we renew our minds. There we, you know, we stop spending all our energy on fruitless things. And we begin to walk into our purpose and our destiny. Yes. So yeah, bring, bring the fire on. Oh, I can't believe I said that, but I know. Right? <laughs> what are you thinking? <laughs> I don't know. It's true though, it, it's so true, ladies. Uh, today, if you want to pop your hand up, if you have something that you want to share um, uh, today, we are going to be uh, allowing that. You know, before we get to our uh, yes, Amen, Debbie. That is so good, Linda. We're going to allow you to share if you'd like to. So just let me know if you have something. Just put your hand up or or, uh, or let me know, you know, this is, this is a, t this is the time ladies, this is the time that he wants us to recognize it's our first, it's our first, it's, these are, this is what we're doing now. We have accomplished, we have come through the first seven and now we're in the eights and now we're in this place where we get to, um, come before him 
in a different way than we than we ever have before. I love that in uh, the Torah portion. Let's see, uh, in Leviticus chapter nine, the Kohanim are beginning their ministry, and then they and then the incident with uh, Nadab and um, and uh, Avihu happens, right? And then right after it happens, there's this thing, another thing that happens, which is that the Holy One tells Aaron to, to, be, to be silent. And uh, that would not be your reaction in the natural if your children were consumed by fire, right? That would not be your reaction. But he said to them, you must not go out from the entrance of the tent of meeting or you will die. For the anointing oil of Adonai is on you. So they acted according to the word of Moses. The anointing is upon you. Today, when I was praying for you guys before we got started, let me see if I can find it. I found, I was led to this scripture and it's in John, the book of John. And I don't know who needs this, but hey, it's a great refresher for for all of us. And I think that we all need the word of God, no matter what, right? We all need the word of God. It's John chapter three. And verse three, it says, yes, indeed, Yeshua answered, because he was talking to John. I tell you that unless a person is born again from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And uh, Nicodemus said to him, how can a grown man be born? Can he go back into his mother's womb and be born a second time? And Yeshua answered him, yes, indeed. I tell you that unless a person is born from water and spirit. Okay, we just talked about the fire, right? The ruach, the fire of God. Unless they're born of water, the mem, mayim, and the spirit, the ruach he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born from the flesh is flesh. What is born from the spirit is spirit. Stop being amazed at my telling you that you must be born again from above. The wind blows where it wants to, and you hear it sound, but you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. That's how it is with everyone who's been born from the spirit. And Nicodemus replied, how can this happen? And Yeshua said, you hold the office of teacher in Israel and you don't know this. See, this is information. This is knowledge that doesn't come from knowledge up here, from knowing things. This is when the Holy Spirit wants to speak life into you right here and right now. Not, not he's going to bypass your head. He's going to go straight to your spirit. He's speaking to the spirit. And he says, um, I tell you that what we speak about, we know what we give evidence of, we have seen. But you people are not accepting the evidence. If you people don't believe me when I tell you the things about the world, how will you believe me when I tell you the things about heaven? Hashamayim. No one has gone up into heaven. There's only the one who comes down from heaven, the son of man, Yeshua HaMashiach. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the son of man be lifted up so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life. And then, okay, let's just go one more. Come on, guys, we can do this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only and unique son, his heir, his seed, right? So that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life instead of being utterly destroyed. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world but rather so that through him, the world might be saved. Those who trust in him are not judged. Those who do not trust in him have already been judged in that they haven't trusted in the one who is God's only and unique son. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That is the um, complete Jewish Bible. It's that one. That was what I was just reading out of the complete Jewish Bible. And uh, it's just the version. It's by David Stern. You're welcome. So God so loved the world that he sent his one and only his heir, his, his, nun, his nun so feet, his Mashiach. He sent him to us, 
right? So when we're reading the book of Leviticus, <laughs> you realize that everything points to Jesus. Everything points to Yeshua. We're not reading the book of Leviticus in place of Yeshua. We're reading the book of Leviticus and saying, where's Yeshua? That's what we should be asking ourselves. Where's Yeshua? How is he showing up? How is he teaching me? How is this relevant to me today? How do I apply this in my life today? What does fire mean? How do I, how do I apply fire to myself? What, I mean, how, what, what, what good is it if it's in a building, you know, from so many thousands of years ago? He's saying the here and now, Yeshua said, I would that all men would be saved, born again, born of spirit and water, fire and water. And you know that heaven is made up of fire and water. Shamayim is the esh, the fire, and mayim, the water. Fire and water, we call it heaven in English, but in Hebrew, it's fire and water put together. So what he's saying is that he wants to draw us in right now. So whoever it is right now, you don't have to, there's no need for an altar call. There's no need for any of that right where you are right now. He said that he loves you and that he wants you to be his and his alone. And he wants to take you out of that place of solitude where you feel like there's nobody for you, that there's, that there's no way for you to get through. And he wants to embrace you. He so loved you that he came to speak to you and to draw you in and to clothe you in righteousness. The, the other word that I got today was that Yeshua is clothing us in righteousness. It is not our righteousness. It is not the reflection of who we are and how good we are and how good we do things and how much scripture we know and what we know up here and what we can say or how we can present ourselves. It's not that at all. It's him. He wants to wrap his cloak around us and clothe us in his righteousness. It is not. Thank you, Linda. It is not our own righteousness. See, the, 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 the way that he wants it reflected is that we reflect his light, that we are not making strange light. We are not making strange fire. We are reflecting his fire. He doesn't want us coming up with our own fire because that will surely bring about separation. Now, is that eternal damnation? I, that, I don't think that that's what he was talking about. I think what he was talking about was separation from him and the fire will bring that separation. That's what fire does. It separates, right? That's what teeth do, right? They separate, they pull apart, they consume, they crush. Yeah, are you feeling it? Have you been feeling it this week? Yeah, 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 exactly. That's the fire of God. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me help you. Let me give you a little hug, okay? <laughs> this is, here, let me, thank you. Thank you, sis. Um, so that's what, that's what he wants to do right now is he wants to explain to us and show us through this that he wants us clothed in his righteousness. Just how Adam and Hava, when they left the garden, what, what had to occur to them before they left the garden? They had to be clothed. They had to have a raiment put upon them. Messiah Yeshua was put upon them in order for them to go out and 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 do what they had to do now that's where we're at day eight this is us going out and going into our first day of work right we're in this realm let's do it gloriously let's leave the stress behind all right it's been a hard week it's been a tough time i get that you all get that it's been really rough. I know that some of you are going through things that are unimaginable right now. Seriously, unimaginable. And our hearts are breaking for you. And we love you. We need to be together as a community and praying and loving on each other. Some of you are going through just normal hard times, and it is more than you can handle. You know, it's not you, you're not you haven't lost a loved one, uh, but you're stressed out from 
from the work week or you're stressed out from relationships or you're stressed out from financial issues. Listen, life is designed to be hard. And what he's saying to us today is I want you to go through these things, but with my cloak of righteousness on you. Will somebody find that scripture for me? You guys can look it up um, where we're clothed in his righteousness. It's in the epistles, Romans 13, 14. <laughs> Of course. Uh, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, Romans 13, 14. Let me read that. I love you so much, Linda. You are so, you are so awesome. If I can find the book of Romans, here we go. 13, 14. All right. All right. Here we go. I have to take off my glasses. Sorry. Said, okay, besides all, um, you know, the time of verse 11, that it's already the hour for you to awaken from sleep. Did you get that? Okay. Um, for now, our salvation is nearer than when we first came to trust. The night is almost gone and the day is near. So let us put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness. Remember, this is, listen, guys, if you read the Torah portion, it talks about that too, not to be drunk, that when you're performing the duties, when you are representing Messiah Yeshua, you don't represent him drunk. You're not representing him as a drunkard. Okay, so that's, there you go. It says it, and he says it again here. Not carousing and in drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, which means sexual promiscuity and sensuality means that, that you are putting yourself and your fleshly desires before the desires of the Holy One, before what is righteous. You are focusing, there is a time and a place for that focus. But when you're serving Adonai in the public, that is not the time. So he's saying, don't, don't come like that. Instead, what are you to do? Put on, put on Messiah Yeshua. This is out of the Messianic Jewish family Bible. And it is, uh, where did I miss? Here it is, 14, verse 14, 13, 14 of the book of Romans. Instead, put on the Lord Messiah Yeshua and stop making provision for the flesh and its cravings. We are clothed in righteousness when we put on Messiah Yeshua. And everything that we are learning in the book of Leviticus, guys, I know that it might not sound like it. <laughs> Every single thing that we are learning in this book is all about us operating in the cloak of the righteousness of, Yesh of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. Everything that we are learning. When we're looking at Aaron, we are looking at Aaron, but we are seeing Yeshua. What is Aaron doing? How is he functioning? Not not that he think of it, not in a noun form, like a, a person or a place or a thing, but what is the function, the verb form? What is happening? What is the action? What is, what is happening in the midst of it? So what's happening in the midst of it is that Aaron is teaching us how to come and approach the Holy One. Aaron is teaching us that even when things are really, really tough, there are times when we need to remain silent, which is what happened to in, in our Torah portion this week, his sons were consumed and the Holy One asked him to be quiet. Will you trust me? Will you trust me? Even when everything seems to be going wrong, will you trust me? Stay on task, stay on mission. Will you trust me? Because this is the one thing I, I, I don't know why I need to share this with you, but I do. This is the one thing. Death is not the end of it all. Okay. Death is not the worst thing that happens. It's not the end of everything. Yes, we are separated for a time. And yes, it's hard. And I'm pleased. I just lost my mom. It's not, uh, trust me, it, it is not easy to be separated from the ones that we love. But God has a plan and a purpose. And are we going to trust him or not? Is he the creator of the heavens and the earth? Is he the holy one? Because if he is, then we need to stop right where we are and stop putting on him that he needs to be Santa Claus giving us every little goodie that we want because we've earned it. No, no. 
he loves us so much that he's saying, I want you to have the things that you need. And even if you don't understand that that's what needs to happen right now, I'm going to trust you to partner with me and let's go through this together. And that's what's happening in our Torah portion this week. Because the greater thing, the, the heavier thing, the weightier thing is that we need to be focusing on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We need to have our hearts set right before him and we need to approach him the only way that we can approach him, which is through Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. It's the only way that we can approach God. If we step out of Yeshua, our Messiah covering us, we cannot approach God. We will be consumed. And so here we are right here, right now, ladies, every one of us this week, this day, today, I want you to recognize that he is cloaking you in his righteousness. And you say, I don't feel it. That's okay. Shh, be still. Shh, let him cloak you. Let him cloak you. Don't use your words to try to figure things out. Don't use your words in anger or in frustration. Shh, just be quiet right before him. Shh, shh, that's the fire. You hear the fire crackling? Let the fire crackle and shh, just be still before him. Let him purify the things that are going on around about you and step into the eights, step into the doorway, the next realm. It's bigger and it's higher than anything that you've ever been in before. He's taking you out of the norm and he's taking you into the eternal. He's taking you into the holy. And that's what he wants to do. That's why he takes us through in this Torah portion and he teaches us what is clean and what is unclean. Clean and unclean do not mean sin and, and sinful and, and, and not sinful. It's not what it means. Please, please, please. It is not sinful to be unclean. There can, you can be sinful and unclean. I'm not saying you can't be. But the terminology for sinful, uh, for clean and unclean is not sin. Okay. When a woman is on her period, she is unclean. What does that mean? That, that God's mad at her, that she's that she, that she has to stay away from everybody, that she's got to be separated. It means that she's in a holy space. And it means that in that holy space, she is not fit for temple service. She's not fit to be in the midst of directing and leading and guiding uh, brothers and sisters into a place of holiness, that she is in a holy space all unto herself, and she needs to be separated and with the Holy One. It's a holy space. She needs to be separated and outside away from the bustle and hustle and all of the busyness of all of that. She needs a place of separation. It's a holy space. Is she sinning? No. So when you hear the word unclean in the Bible, don't look at it as sin. Look at it as not fit for temple service. So it has another purpose. Okay. It has another purpose. Pigs are unclean for food. Okay. Because they're not made for food. They're made for eating garbage. That's what their job is. They're not sinful. God created them. He made them. They've got a purpose. Let them do their purpose. Let them function the way they're supposed to function. Let them clean the earth. Let them clean up all the garbage. Let them do their function. Right. It doesn't mean that they're sinful. And so let me read some of the comments here, guys, so I can stay on with everybody. All right, you guys, you are fabulous. I love you. I love you. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We must trust him. Okay. Ceremonially unclean. See, that's the perfect way to say it. Thank you, Marion. Marion, ceremonially unclean. That's, that's what it's talking about, guys. But we get these... Um, we get these doctrines, guys, that put, put such a heavy weight on us. And can I just tell you that the word of God, his, his ways, his ways are not a burden. His ways are life. Are some of them difficult? <laughs> of course. If it was easy, it wouldn't mean anything to us. We struggle with it. Of course we do. Do we understand it all? No, 
but we have all eternity to learn these things. We're going to be sitting up in the Starbucks and we're going to be sitting at the Starbucks of, in the holy place with the holy one, with Moses and Aaron. And we're going to be talking about this and we're going to be talking, how did you keep your mouth quiet, Aaron? I mean, when your sons got consumed, woohoo. And then we're going to be drinking our Starbucks coffees because, you know, Starbucks is definitely going to be there. And we'll be hanging out and we'll be talking about these for eternity. So right now, what we need to do is focus stay on mission. Don't let things distract you. The hard things that are in life, the hard things that are in the world, the hard things that are in this pandemic that's been occurring, the hard things that are in our daily walks. If your husband's an unbeliever or your children are unbelievers, the hard things that are occurring right now in your home, that's hard. I am not pretending that it's not. That is hard, right? Tough. And we need to be praying for one another. That's why we have a community praying for one another. But listen to me, you're not placed in a situation that you're in because you're outside of the will of God, sister, being outside of the will of God, right this minute, you're in the will of God. You, you say to him, father, I need you right now. I am making a mess of this on my own. I need you right now. Father God, look what, look what's all around me guess what? His cloak of righteousness covers you. And in the midst of the mess that you're in, he will get glorified in the midst of your mess. It doesn't mean you need to leave your husband. It doesn't mean that you need to adopt out your kids. <laughs> okay. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you need to quit your job because they're so unholy in there and they're slandering and it's horrible and it's hard. It might mean that at some time in the future, but right now wait on him. Right now, Father, cloak me in your righteousness so that in the midst of this situation, you are lifted up. Because what did he say? Unless I am lifted up, I won't be able to draw men unto myself. So where you're at right now in your situation, you be cloaked in his righteousness. You are on mission. You are on target right now, right where you are. You are the light of the world. You're the light of the world in your home. You're the light of the world in your PTA meetings. You're the light of the world in your uh, school. You're the light of the world in your workplace. You're the light of the world in your in your community, at the grocery store, in your home, in your neighborhood, to your neighbor. You are the light of the world. Why? Because Yeshua Messiah is shining through you. He is in you. He is for you. He is with you. He is cloaking you in his righteousness. You are not alone. This is not about you by yourself. And he has brought a community of people to you, to pray with you, to encourage you, to love on you, not to criticize you, not to judge you, not to judge what's going on in your life, but to uphold you. You uphold me. When I was all fingers, this morning, all toes this morning, no fingers, I had no fingers, couldn't even get us on live. You guys upheld me. You loved on me. You started praying for me. You kept me. That's what community is all about. Thank you. Thank you for letting me function the way that I can function. I can't function the way that Charlie functions. She's incredible. She's amazing. I don't compare myself to her because if I do, I would come up lacking, <laughs> but I'm not her. I'm me and I need to be me. Sisters, you need to be you. Each one of you needs to be you because that's why you're in the situation you're in. He needs you. He needs your fragrance. He needs Messiah wrapping around you. And the two of you together are creating this beautiful aroma that your environment, the people that he's brought into your life need that aroma. They need your abilities and your talents and your gifts and your voice and your eyes and your mouth and your hands and your feet. He needs that in that situation. That's why you're there. Not because he doesn't love you, not because you've blown it. Of course, we've all blown it. Don't, that's, that's neither here nor there. We've all blown it. Repentance is instant. You turn. If you're blowing it, turn just a tiny bit. That's all it takes. Turn to him. Father, forgive me. Remember we, we, in the first five chapters of Leviticus, the very first thing, the very first chapter one, the Ola, Korban Ola, the very first thing that we need to do is 
submit our wills to him. The very first thing, just do that. Let him change the situation from being the worst day of your life to being the story that your grandkids will tell their grandkids. You are not going to believe what my great grandmother did. You are not going to believe how she changed the atmosphere of our family lineage, how she stuck with us, even when, even when my grandpa was doing this, or even when my uncle was doing this, or even when my aunt was doing this, she stuck with him and she believed God. And she was that fire of God in the midst of the circumstances. That's what you get to do today, guys. That's, you get to be that. You get to do that. All right, I hope that you guys can feel my heart and feel my love toward you. And I know that you're going to read this Torah portion and you're going to go, hey, she didn't even cover <laughs> all the things in these three chapters. No, I didn't. But you get to read that tonight and you get to read it with eyes that you are cloaked in the righteousness of Yeshua Messiah. You get to read it with eyes that today is the day of your salvation. Today, today. You need to take a shower later and Think of it as a mikvah. <laughs> Think of it as the water washing you, the word of God washing over you because the fire of God is within you and that flame is hot and that flame is consuming and that flame is, is separating the things that are not pleasing to him and it's separating it all. And you take, allow that water to wash over you and let that just be the thing that takes you right into the, right into the heartbeat of Messiah Yeshua. Okay, eighth day. Day eight, live in the eights. All right. I love you. I hope that you, I hope that you guys are good. I'm going to let you um, pop on here. It is now 1205. I need to um, go into the after party. If you are live with us, will you please jump over here? Crystal or um, one of you smart ladies, Caitlin or somebody, would you pop over the, um, link for them to be able to jump on here and come in so that they can be in our after party. I would really appreciate it. Listen, I'm going to look at the, before we leave, I'm going to look at some of the uh, comments real quick. Okay. In case I missed anything. Um, have, hopefully Starbucks in heaven will have less caffeine and not taste burnt. Oh, don't you know it? <laughs> no calories either. Um, we don't have to be scared of his wrath. Yeah. Or any present torment. That's right. That's right. It's his refinement. Exactly. Thank you, sis. Thank you, Mary Catherine. I appreciate you. Yes. Marion Singer, God delivers righteous judgment. You know, he's perfect. His ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. And he truly, he truly knows what he's doing. And he's partnering with us. Why? Because he loves us. That's why he cloaks us in Yeshua. He cloaks us in the raiment of the Messiah. He cloaks us in him. That salvation, that right there, that's how we come before him always. So he doesn't see that stuff in us. He sees Yeshua in us. Beautiful. Yes. All of the, yes, sister Wanda, the hard disappointments, the hard things, of course, they are distractions, they're disappointments. You're exactly where you need to be. Yeah, exactly where you need to be. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. I am going to allow you to come on over to the after party now. We'll stop the recording. I love you all very much. Thank you. Remember, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day of your salvation. You be blessed right? If you need prayer, grab a hold of one of these sisters, message them, get a hold of them on Facebook or get a hold of them on messenger, get a hold of them and say, I need to pray. Okay. You're not alone. We're all here together. I love you so much. All right. Let's go to our after party. Blessings to all of you live. Thank you so much. Those of you that are listening on the podcast, we bless you. We hope that you enjoyed being with us. Come and join us again on the next week. Come and join us live whenever you can. Blessings, blessings, blessings to all of you. Amen.